documentation. Tanique, you give me some more water, I guess. Can you bring me some, too? No, it's in the bottle. Thank you. They're right. Oh, bottle water. Oh, <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> She's like, huh? <laughs> 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 My second child didn't want to take the water. Gonna be <coughs> oh. Wow. I don't want the water. Really water. Really it's really funny. Right. I have the water come right back up. Yeah, but most of the time it happens when you dehydrate. <coughs> but she wouldn't let me drink no water. Yeah, it, kept, it kept on. I know, but it kept on coming up. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> see, I, see I, used to, I used to drink like pottery, like it was water, trying to stay hydrated. It was, salt, it was too much salt and sugar, so it would make me dehydrate. Yeah, I hate Coconut water, water is like the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Yes. But it tastes better out the coconut than it does like in the store. It's like it's your processed sugar. And it's mm -hmm. your <laughs> I don't like it so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wait to. Okay, this time I went to bed and I'm sleepy. I don't know. Okay, so we're going to talk about medical record uh, documentation, medical record documentation. Why is it important to have medical record documentation? True, true, that's right. That is the principle of it. And the insurance and the insurance gotta have paperwork for everything you did. That is true. So you gotta have a picture of everything you mm -hmm. that's So that's the reason for the correct documentation. <laughs> and to make sure you don't kill nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By giving them stuff to bail like too. You have because it should be these like so basically like detailed notes of the patient. Really? I learned something already. What you learned? It was like, you know, because we are in um, insurance, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to ask this for your definitions. Where mm -hmm. would we be able to find? Did you give us a copy? Definitions? Yeah. Like the abbreviations there? Yeah. Uh, okay. Remember, I said you have to Google it. Okay. If you don't have the book, you have to Google it. Okay. If you have the handbook, then it would be within the first one or two okay. pages of the okay. chapter. Oh, okay. Yeah, or in the back glossary of the handbook. But you, do you have a handbook? No, I don't have a handbook. Yeah. Right. So you have to get it. Make sure it's medical related, though. Make sure yeah. they're medical related. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, so electronic oh. medical records. Oh, paper and electronic. Gosh. I didn't care it was like a big difference. I thought it was like all the same. No. Well, you still got to write them all on paper when you put them in the computer. No. Right? Oh? No. no. Okay, so. But how do they call it if it's not on paper? Okay, give me a few minutes and I'll explain. Okay, so electronic medical records is dinosaur age. Uh, dinosaur age. Yes. Documentation. 
Electronic? No, sweet. You just made it electronic. I did? Yes. Okay, paper-based medical record. <laughs> okay, let me finish, sweetie. No, well, you was writing it. You were I, I know, I, I know, I know. But but you're throwing me off when you constantly talk. Please let me finish, okay? Bless your heart, baby. Bless your heart. Okay. This is something that we used to do back in the 80s, the 90s, okay, uh, maybe the early 2000s, okay, the 70s, the 60s, things of that nature. Okay, so in paper-based medical records, you have terminal digit order, okay? which is hospital medical records. Okay. And then you have alphabetic medical records. Which is in a physician office setting. Okay. All right. So the reason why you're probably asking, well, why are you teaching me this? Because some offices that you may work in may still have paper-based medical records. Have y'all ever seen, let me give you an example by what I mean. Have y'all ever seen in a doctor's office where a patient's file looks like this? It's about the real big charts. Charts. Oh yeah, mine was super big. I understand. These are known as paper-based medical records. Okay. And when you file them on the shelves, I don't know if y'all ever seen a medical record room, a paper-based uh, medical record room, and they're yeah. color-coded, yeah. right? Okay. So usually they have the first initial, like your last name is Belita, V-E-I, V-I, L-L. So it'll have V-I-L and then five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And it may have that going in alphabetical order. Your name is Sarah. They may have a Robert. So Robert's medical record is going to be listed before yours because Robert begins with R, Sarah begins with what? S. S. Do y'all understand how they work? Yeah. Okay. So the reason why I'm teaching y'all this is because I don't want y'all working in a hospital setting. You can work in medical records in the hospital. I just don't want you to think that all medical record settings are alike. They're not alike. They're categorized differently. Okay. All right. Now, terminal digit order in a hospital setting, they're categorized kind of backwards. So they may have, for example, five, six, one, three. Zero zero one five six one three zero zero two. That's considered terminal digit order. It, it's it's backwards, I know, but it it all is it's like that for good reason, so that um you have to have room for shelving. Have y'all ever seen where the shelf is rolled? This way, and you turn it, and it's rolled that way. Have y'all ever seen it on TV? Yeah, I've seen it on TV. You seen it on TV? Okay, so it's like that in some hospitals that still have that. They're still trying to purge out paper-based medical records and go electronic. Okay, what you all are going to learn next month after you finish this class is electronic medical records. And those are jobs where 
medical record scribe is a person that walks into the office with a physician. And as the physician talks, they type in everything because they know where everything is supposed to go on the screen. Some doctors don't want to be bothered with that because they got too many other things on their mind. So they need you to help scribe what's going on. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. So electronic medical records. I know y'all probably saying, well, what's the big deal with electronic medical records? I'm glad you asked. Electronic medical records is provider based. Provider based medical records. Okay. Electronic health record is broad based information of the medical record. And I'm going to explain what that means. Okay, so let's suppose that you all go to Kelsey Sebo Clinic. Okay, so I'm gonna sit down at this point, it's getting lower. Okay. The circle of life, well, let, let me explain this. Okay, so, for electronic health record, medical records, say like you go to Kelsey Sebo Clinic. Physician care, right? All right. They have your demographics. Demographics are what? Patient what? Address. address, name, address, phone number. Uh huh. What else? Respect for the patient. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Very good. Very good. Those are called demographics. Demographics is very important. Okay. Now, in those dem uh, electronic medical records. You also have what they call soap notes. Soap notes are your standard form of writing patient care information. Okay, remember what I said before? S means subjective. Very good. What does O mean? Objective. Objective. Very good. Assessment? Assessment. Plan? Plan. Very good, Sarah. Yeah, I Very good. I she said A was both the most important thing to remember, so I didn't remember what the rest of the was. Plan. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and where do we medical billers live? Assessment. Very good, LaRonda. You got it. Assessment. We have to live in the assessment part of the medical record. Why do we live in the assessment part of medical record? Because it is comprised of what? Did they have like the diagnosis and all that in the assessment? Diagnosis code. And procedure code. procedure code, very good. And it also uh, lets you know sometimes it can have more than one code. That's true. Okay, sometimes it can have more than one procedure. Okay, all right. Now, in the uh, objective, you have, let me write that down, write it red. You have the review of systems, ROS, review of systems. How many systems of the body are there? Eleven. Eleven. Very good. Y'all are short. Eleven systems of the body. 
to the little sisters of the body. Okay. All right. So the doctor has to go about determining how many systems of the body does he have to check to get to a point of how to diagnose you and what to do about you. Remember I said diagnosis tells what? What's wrong, What's wrong with, with the patient? That's right. Procedure does what? Tells what? What? What, what was done? What was done? What, was what the doctor diagnosis? Yes. What was what the doctor did about the patient? Okay. <laughs> Very good. What does the plan tell us? What does the plan tell us? Does it does it tell you with the prediction of the doctor? Prediction of the doctor before it takes place. Okay, hold on. Let me let me let me come to Lerana. Lerana, what did you say? I said, does it tell you the point the plant the doctor has for treatment before it takes place, or a kind of like that? But he like if he's going to refer you to a specialist. Okay. Medication. If he's going to give you medication, say return to office RTO, return to office in two weeks, right? Or return to the office in a month. Yeah, so that's what that plan is. That's like treatment, right? That's treatment. Very good. So treatment. TX means treatment, not Texas. We talking medical language. TX means treatment. Treatment says RTO. RTO means what? Return, Return to, to office. office. So I, Let's... I know we keep talking about the diagnosis and procedure codes, but does the prognosis go in the notes as well? Yes. And I'm, I'm going to come back to that when I go to subjective. So you already there. Hold that thought right there. Hold that thought. Okay. Two weeks with penicillin. Return to office two weeks with penicillin. Okay. And that's it. Uh, follow a diabetic diet. That's not fun. No, it's not fun. <laughs> not fun at all. Okay. That's what the plan does. Subjective. Subjective is the nurse this is the <laughs> conversation between the nurse and the who patient and the patient so the nurse is going to ask the patient to cc cc means chief complaint okay. okay chief complaint what's the matter what's wrong with you okay what's the matter so i'm just gonna put it right up here What's the matter? What brings you in? Oh, I have an earache. I'm dizzy. I'm coughing. My chest hurt. My head hurt. <laughs> I feel stuffy. I, I, I throw up everything. Okay. That's what CC means. So when you're saying prognosis, um, LaRonda, that's where prognosis fall in right there. Okay. Okay. So it's going to give that, the doctor an idea of what all to check. Right. Well, and I was just, I was just making sure that's included in the notes before you get a diagnosis and a procedure. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And it also helps the physician to make a, a confirmed determination, a definitive determination that this is the problem of the patient. Sometimes patients can give symptoms and it, it may not be what, what's, being thought of. It may be something else. Okay. So what's CC? What else? The patient is having their what? Vital signs taken. What did I say vital, vital signs are made the of? Weak, blood pressure. Well, weak, now weak, wait. Weak, blood pressure. Uh-huh. Yeah, pulse. Uh-huh. Um, vital temperature. Signs. Respiration. Respiration. And temperature. temperature. Your blood pressure. Pulse, respiration, temperature, vital signs, or four things. Okay. Why do they do that? Because if your blood pressure is anywhere over 120 over 80, which is the normal, if it's 140 over 90, did you have some coffee? Were you rushing to get in here? Are you relaxed? Okay, you're relaxed, but you still 140 over 90. You 160 over 90. Pre hypertension. Pre hypertension. So that lets the, 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 the first thing the doctor is going to look at those vital signs, your blood pressure is high. You feeling okay? Yeah, I feel fine. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, I feel fine. You sure? Because this ain't normal. Okay. Your pulse. Your pulse should be within a range of 55 to 65. Okay. If it's 75, 
You feeling okay? Yeah, I feel fine. You feeling okay? Yeah, I feel well. Why is your pulse so high? Are well, you I, excited? Did you have coffee? Well, I thought it was because of your age. Like, you know, it like, can be a determining like, factor. Okay, because I was in the doctor's office with my mom, and he was he was saying that the normal because she's over sixty. Okay. The normal range is between fifty-five and you know, which is the fifty-five and sixty-five. Mm-hmm. Right. And it does have a determining factor. Children's pulse tend to be a little higher. Well, you know, a little more, even like a baby inside of here, their heart rate is like. Right. Right. Because they're younger and their bodies are a lot smaller. The older you get, the more stretched your body is, the more stretched your heart muscles are, the more uh, pulses that you have lived. So it gets slower over time. You are absolutely right. So age is a factor in that. So are other components <laughs> such as weight and Because sometimes I have a sorority sister who has a very low heart rate, very low pulse, but she feels fine. And it's just genetic of her of her body. Mm. Yeah. Because the out when I got home. <laughs> well, okay. Did everything turn out okay? Yeah, I was fine. Okay. Okay. But my, well, blood, they... my blood pressure was up. And the doctor just was being, she didn't want to see me. She was like, go see Bertie. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Because if something happens to you in her office, that's a liability on her. The, the best hospital. advice is I'm always to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, respiration, your breathing. Are you congested? Are you having a, a bronchial attack, asthma attack, That's respiration? Okay. Your temperature. Is your temperature anywhere above 98.6? Okay. If it's anywhere a little bit above, sometimes if it's over 99, you're fine, 99 and below. But if it's 100, 101, okay, you got some fevers and some chills. So you coming down with something or you're not feeling well. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, is it true, like, if, like, say, if um, your temperature is 98.5, okay, um, and uh, like, say, like, for like daycare and stuff like that, uh, they can uh, reject you because they said that you got to put one more point on there. Um, long if it's not under 97.4. That's safe. Anywhere that's like 97.4 between 99, you're, you're pretty much okay. But it's all about liability. So uh, sometimes they would add another point on there just to get it read. No, they don't want to be responsible. But if your baby is sick and if it's a 98.7, 98, they're going to keep monitoring that baby. If that temperature go up high, you're going to have to come get your child because they don't want to be responsible. Now I got a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what's the temperature for babies to have to go to the emergency room? Because I know it's different in adults. So like, think that the adults is like a 102 or something like that. It could be. It could be. Uh, it, it varies. Again, their bodies are so little. Uh, but your pediatrician will let you know. Because I, I don't quite know that part. But your pediatrician will let you know the, the like normal range. One, 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 one. Mm-hmm. Girl, I, I was scared his temperature gets to 100. I'll be like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And make sure when y'all do go to the children's hospitals, go to the children's hospitals out in the suburbs. I told some of my night nice students that the reason why I say that is because if you go to Texas Children in the Medical Center, everybody and their mama yeah, is at yeah. Texas Children in the Medical Center. That's why they have them in Katy, the Woodlands and, and Sugar Land and other places like that. Because some folks live out in the suburbs. They don't want to travel that far. Well, yeah, I'll be in Sugar Land. Mm-hmm. And so it's a lot better. It's a lot better for you to go to those places because you'll get served a lot quicker and a lot better. Especially if you live in the suburbs. What is it? Yeah. Exactly. Why well, drive halfway across the town when you don't well, have to? Well, they usually take the child quicker than um, uh, other patients because I, I remember when I got there, a uh, patient got where? Yeah. Um, I don't understand because he's bleeding and everything, but then when I came in there with my teeth, snatched them up quicker. Yeah, yeah. Because they're they're a little bit more fragile. Children are a little bit more fragile. They kind of like right next to your trauma cases. So they're a little bit more fragile. Yeah. 
And parents, of course, something happens. You're more yeah, irate. This lady act a donkey in their mercy. I feel bad. I was like, he's good. Like, I'm serious. She, she, she like acting like, a fool donkey. I don't know. She had, she had brought the baby to the doctor. And mm-hmm. Something was wrong. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, my God. She had yeah. people out. They had to like, transfer her and the baby to another medical center. Yeah. I was like, yeah. wow. Oh. Depending on the baby was in there crying. Some of her teeth hurt. Exactly. Okay, y'all, we're digressing. Okay, yeah, I, I hear you, sweetie. We're digressing. We're digressing. It's already charged up enough anyway. Uh, so what I'm saying is um, take your children to the hospitals out in the suburbs because you'll get service a lot better and everybody is not there, you know, so uh, especially when it comes to your children. Um, what is it, dear? You might write something else that I wanted to... Uh, like a Take a picture. Let me get out of the way. Mm-hmm. Oh, we still might break the cake. Mm-hmm. Oh, you sweet. You sweet. Twinkies are doing me fun. Oh, I just like, I can't get a little bit of us. Yeah, I know. I know. I got to quit eating this. Okay. I know. No, I'm going to eat cheese, take a little bit of like twice this week. Oh, that's not good. You got to watch your blood sugar. Is your gestational? My glucose test is fine. Okay. Oh, I know, but yeah, eat more fruit than you do ice cream and stuff. Eat more fruit. I do the same thing with my children. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, at, at school, mm-hmm. we walk in. Uh, they have like a board like that, and they have whatever for what month. Like mm-hmm. say for April, we have everything that's going on in April. And I take pictures, take my watch. Uh, uh, they, uh, they're they're to keep going on. Very good. Very good. Exactly. Okay, so let's reiterate what's on the board here. Paper-based medical records. Their dinosaur age documentation. They also <laughs> use soap notes as well for uh, paper-based medical well, you records. Would think they would because everything has to be written down, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Now, in terminal digit medical records, they don't exactly use uh, soap notes. They, they know. They have. Uh, what you call like uh, categorical, cate- cate- categorical notes or something? Yeah, I'm trying to spell it. So if I spell it wrong, forgive me. No, it's different. Yeah, ca- hi, sweetie. I saw I saw your text. I didn't get a chance to respond, but I saw your text. So I'll respond. It's okay. It's very okay. Come get one of these sheets, baby. Okay, so you the one who said that. So category, category. Oh, it's okay, baby. It's okay. It's very okay. Okay, category. There's there's four different types of terminal of medical records in the hospital. There's four different types, and I have to come back and tell y'all what those are. I'm so about to ask you. Yeah, <laughs> I know you were. So I have to uh, get the book and bring it back to you and let you know what they are. It depends on the hospital setting because not all inpatient hospitals are the same. You have long term hospital care, you have skilled nursing hospitals, you have real rehabilitation hospitals. So some of them are different. Let me give an example by what I mean. In your typical paper-based medical records for hospitals, you have what they call nurse's notes. That's one category. You have another set, which is called doctor's notes. That's another category. You have pharmacy notes. That's another category. You have laboratory notes. That's another category. So they all list in category, but in, but in date order. Okay. Nurse's notes, doctor's notes, Laboratory oh, notes, forms of their own, and I forgot what's the what's the uh, proper name for that. Uh, and so, whenever a nurse comes to see you, say like uh, from when I was in the hospital, oh my goodness, they come every every two or three times per shift. I know. Two or three times per shift. Like, if you they, go visit somebody in the hospital, you plan to stay. You ain't gonna be able to go to sleep. You no, not really. You're not gonna be able to go to sleep. No. Every time you go to sleep, you come in and the light off. Yeah, you, you're not gonna go to sleep. So when they do come in, 
they have to document on their screen, okay, blood pressure is this, temperature is this, right, pulse is this. They have to check to make sure they have to monitor it. Okay. And they have to do they that. Have a yes. But can't they see that from the nurse station when you hooked up to the machine? They can see those... that, but sweetie, they have to see you live. Okay. Because if you that they don't see you live in the room and something happens, the family is gonna question why didn't you go into the room and check and see how she was doing? She may be or he may be fine hooked up to the monitors. But what if they were trying to get out the bath, get out the bed to get to the bathroom and they oh, slip and fall? It's, it's, yeah, and then, and, then, and then a lot of times you have to unhook them. So have to yes. The in order to it's get a them constant them. liability. So when you see them come into the room with those push carts and they're doing your blood pressure and all mm-hmm. like that, those are called point of service machines. Okay. P.O.S. POS point of, so there we go again with the lingo. <laughs> point of service and insurance. Oh. Point of service for <laughs> nursing. <laughs> When they work those machines, those are called point of service. Okay. okay. So, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> please pay attention to when they have in conversations with you and kind of follow the context clues of what they're talking about. Is everybody clear? Okay. You do have to ask. You do have to consistently ask. Very good. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's a liability. So, no, they, they're not going to watch you. Just They can watch you from the monitor, but that's yeah, not that's enough. Right. That's not enough. They have to ask. Yes, she wanted water. I went and got her water. If I'm watching you from the monitor and you wanted water and you wasn't able to get up and get the water, I didn't do my job as a nurse to make sure. Do you need water? Do you need anything? Mom, you need- she had a, a thing stuck in her arm mm-hmm. after she had her surgery for her to remove her gallbladder. And mm-hmm. they were supposed to take it out of her. Mm-hmm. And she kept feeling a bad pain in her arm. Mm-hmm. And then she finally realized. So, yeah, so I don't like. So did, did did they remove it? They did finally, but it but it, was, it was there, really bothering her, and she kept saying it. But they had all these bandages over it. Oh, her. okay, okay. So, was it for her IV? Yes. yes okay, okay, okay. And they must have. I'm parallel. I, I hate those. I'm parallel. 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 Like, uh, so they had to take it out of the blood. Coming out. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did they re stick you somewhere else? Yeah. You got it. Yeah. 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 Uncomfortable like that. Yeah. It, it up. You have to be that. your own best yeah. advocate of your body. Are you hearing me? And Natalie, don't let them stick you and you bubbling up. Yeah. Make them come.
And they had the, chief, the chief nurse had to come in there after he tried to kill her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, she said, um, nurse, doctor notes, pharmacy notes, radiology notes, lab notes. Uh, looking to do that. You check. That's 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 a lot of clearance. They actually, they moved. They actually, it's not in the hospital anymore. They actually moved it outside the hospital. Oh, okay. So, um, so like that, the uh, medical media department, all that stuff has been moved to the administration building. So okay. Like the whole administration building. Well, okay. if you want to check into it, see if they'll let let the class come and do a tour, and what are the policies and procedures we need to do to fill out for that? Okay. Okay, because sometimes we may have to fill out paperwork because that's that's a whole nother governmental type hospital setting. That's a whole nother level. Yeah. But um, I'm going to get in touch with uh, Quentin Meese, some other hospitals where I did my internship, Say, and then uh, see if they can let y'all come in and, and tour how they do what they do in can a typical hospital. Help? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, you know what? That's a great idea. I'd probably ask her since we're not far from Sugar Land. That'd be a great idea. She did it in a country, but not here. Which hospital does she work in? Her husband work out in the sugar More Herman. That's the one I'm having the baby in. Oh, okay. Okay. It's a lot of Patel, so you got to know which, which husband. Because he's a cardio, cardiovascular, I think. A cardiothoracic, something like that, surgeon. Yeah, so he's good. Okay, so let's move on. Are we going to be here or are we going to go straight there? Because I'll go through the house. We'll figure that out. We'll figure that out. Yeah, we'll figure that out. Let's take out the worksheets. Uh, chapter 4 worksheet. Did the break time? No. Okay. No, 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 Okay, let me find my chapter four answer sheet. Oh, you got brain injection? Oh, I'm not going to get it. Okay, who has their chapter four answer sheet? Me, and we're missing the number six answer for this one. Okay. Okay. Did I give you chapter four? Okay. Could you share with her? With the, oh, and the answer. Natalie, yeah. I appreciate that. I'm missing who, honey? Uh, answer for number six. For chapter four? Yes, chapter four, assignment four one. Oh, yeah. I saw that. That was a typographical error on their part. Okay, I see that. I see that. Okay, and Sarah wrote it in, so this is good. Number six is advanced clinical processes. Advanced clinical processes. So find your answer sheet like this and your chapter four, four dash one. Four dash one. I'm running on some paper. Okay, that's fine. Clinical advanced. Advanced clinical processes. Advanced, advanced clinical processes. That's crazy. I got all of them put up. Yes. Okay. Advanced clinical processes. Okay. That's number six. Number six. Number six is advanced clinical processes. So I'm going to read the, um, you know what? I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to have y'all read it and then I'll lecture on it. Uh, Starting with Sarah, number one. Sarah, if you can read number one. Um, Written or graphic information about patient care is termed a termed Mm -hmm. A or N. Uh, health a health record. These are health records. Paper-based medical records, electronic medical records. I'm going to explain to you about ele- electronic health records, but I'm, I'm going to wait till we're through with that. Okay, so wait. 
When I explain to y'all the circle of life, how that works. Okay, yes. So you explain paper phrase, you explain the electronic. Is there another one? Well, this is something different. This is this is this right here is something different of what I'm explaining. Okay, so, so I was like, dude, was this on the 4-1, so I was trying to make sure. I know, I know. <laughs> I'll explain when I get to it. Thank you, sweetie. Okay, uh, uh, I want to call you Sophia, and that is not your name. Your name is Nally, but you look like Sophia. Okay, <laughs> I know, I know. I don't know why I want to do that. I'm sorry, Nally. Go ahead, read number two. List three of the various types of health records systems that can be used in medical practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A problem oriented record system, B mm -hmm. source oriented record system, C integrated record system. These are the three that I was trying to remember and I it just was vague. Okay, so source, the one I was telling you about this categorical, like I told you, you have uh, nurses notes, you have physician notes, you have pharmacy notes, all of that is source-based medical records, so source-oriented medical records, okay? okay. The second, one? second one is source-oriented record systems. Source-oriented record system. Source-oriented record system. Oh, okay. Um, I want to put it next to... Um, like for for their examples. Okay. The source, um, the source or the <coughs> record system. Okay. Cool. And yeah, make sure y'all get back to Sarah. Oh, what type of example is that? Okay, source or oriented uh, medical records uh, are category based. The category. Based. If you want to find out what the nurses wrote about the patient for today, between seven in the morning this morning and three o'clock this afternoon, if you want to find out what, what the The doctor's notes. If a, a patient was given what source do you go to? to? Pharmacy No. Do you understand? Okay, so go category. So that's source oriented uh, and the other two has a, a category of its own serial based on there no okay Serial base uh, type medical records and it should be on there, but it's not. It, it's only for folks who are in the room and, and they're giving serial numbers random. Okay, they're not, they're not going to be in their typical paper medical records. They're going to have a, a, a medical record on about that patient. So what I mean is, uh-huh. It can be based on a serial number. Serial number. 
Okay, so let me give an example. I know I'm running out of space. Okay, so what, what's the Julian date? Somebody Google what's today's Julian date. Google that 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 question. What is today? Today's Julian date. Zero one. Oh, uh huh. Julian date, J U U L I A N, Julian date. Okay. It's, you want the calendar? The number. The three digit number. Or two, two digit number. I don't know. Is it the 96th day? Is today the 96th day of the year? The 100th day of the year? I don't know. I got it. I got it. I, I can do it. I can do it right here, sweetie. Don't worry. One oh seven. Okay. Thank you, sweetie. What's the price on the size cake? I'm sorry, I know it's not part of the extra <laughs> Bless you. Okay, so today is April 17th. You're right, Nelly. It's the 107th day of the year. 107th day of, of the year. 107 to 019. Does everybody understand that? Okay. So, in between these serial numbers, there is a Julian day. This is the year. This is the medical record number right, right here. Now, let's suppose this is your medical record number, Sarah. Uh -huh. And let's suppose Natalie came in after you. So she's next Julian date. 